Hey everybody, Terrence here from Engadget, and uh, we're going to take a quick look at the new Chrome beta for Android. Uh, as you can see, get the little Chrome icon down here. You open it up, you launch it, and this is um, Google's attempt to sort of bridge the gap between their desktop browser product and the default Android browser uh, that comes prepackaged with uh, every Android device. Now, uh, for the moment, this is uh, ice cream sandwich only. Thankfully, I happen to have a Galaxy Nexus here, so uh, I was able to take it for a quick spin. Now, uh, you'll see uh, more full-fledged uh, Acid and Sun Spider scores in the uh, hands-on post itself in the text. We've got a whole chart there for you. But uh, I will tell you, while it is fast in, uh, you know, actual use, you don't seem, it doesn't seem to have any hiccups. It's not noticeably slower than anything, any other browsers that we've used. Uh, it, it does pull up the rear of the pack as far as Android browsers go. It's uh, slower than the default Android browser. It's slower than the stable version of Firefox for Android, uh, Dolphin HD. Uh, but it does score a perfect 100 on the ACID 3 test, which not all of those browsers uh, can brag about. Now, um, when you first launch it, you're going to be asked to sign into your Google account. And uh, this is the tape tab you'll be presented with, which is just your Welcome to Chrome tab. But uh, I want to show you real quick, before we check out all the other stuff, this the uh, new tab page. When you first open up a new tab, this is uh, what you're going to be greeted with. Now it syncs. Um, you're going to see, you know, like you do on the desktop version, here's you know, your most, most visited ta uh, pay sites, as well as uh, recently closed tabs. Uh, and then it is going to sync your bookmarks, and you can see I have uh, it syncs my bookmarks here. And it also syncs tabs that you might have open on other uh, machines, which is really great and almost completely eliminates the need for uh, Chrome to phone. Now you can see that it has all the tabs that I have open on my other uh, machines, on my MacBook and on my uh, ThinkPad here, and it's got them divided up by machine so I can see actually which one it's on. Um, now, typing, tapping on these quickly brings them up and opens up the page. You can see there's that little slide-in animation as it comes in, and there's uh, Engadget for you. And you can see it renders really quickly. Um, there's no issues with it. Uh, the only hiccup that we have, as you can see, is as you uh, scroll down more complex pages, sometimes it uh, takes a little while to catch up with uh, rendering. Uh, you'll see that particularly in the uh, desktop version of Engadget as we open it up here. And once again, you can see it actually does render nice and quick. Um, not mo noticeably slower than any other browser we've seen, but uh, as you can see, you scroll down and it, it does sort of have that slight hiccup if you scroll too quick. Uh, now the other thing that does sync is your Omnibar uh, suggestions and all that stuff. So as you start typing, you'll see you'll get the same suggestions you would get if you were typing in Chrome on your desktop, which is uh, really neat. Now, looking at the rest of the uh, interface, you'll see that th there are some minor differences between the Android browser that comes on every phone by default and Chrome. Um, up top is the address bar, as you'd expect, along with the tab switching button and the action overflow button. But uh, this bar, unlike the default Android one, doesn't disappear. As you can see as I scroll down, it, it stays there, which uh, is nice for those who want to have uh, quick and easy access to all their controls all the time, but might get a little frustrating for those, for those of you who want to dedicate as much screen real estate to a page as possible. Now you do have a couple of different ways to switch tabs. Tapping on the button up top opens the tab overview like this. Um, just like it does pretty much with the uh, standard Android browser, and if you switch into landscape mode, it switches the orientation. Uh, and you can sort of swipe between them. You see here it stacks stacks them up and compress them. You swipe left and right, and there's these little neat animations, kind of like the uh, home screen on Ice Cream Sandwich that you know has them tilting as you reach the end. And uh, it, it the it does also have this where you can it ha uses the accelerometer and allows you to tilt to scroll through them, uh, which is neat but not really particularly useful as you can see. You can fling it the faster you do it, the quicker it switches between them. Now the other way to switch tabs is by actually just swiping left and right, uh, just sort of flicking the page off the screen like that. Um, it's not, as you can see, 
always 100% reliable. It's a little buggy. And when you reach the end, once again, there's one of those neat little 3D animations as you get through. Now, uh, just like with the standard Android browser closing a tab, there are little X's over here, but you can also just sort of swipe them off the screen left and right if you're in portrait, down if you're in landscape. Now the uh, only thing that might bother some of you is there is no flash support for Chrome on Android right now. Uh, I'll show you real quick by bringing up uh, Congregate. And if you open up a game, it just gives you that uh, plug-in missing message. Uh, honestly, it doesn't bother us too much. You can always really easily just switch over to the standard Android browser. And Adobe has already made it clear that uh, Flash for Mobile's days are numbered, so not an entirely surprising development. Still, there's always a chance that Google could enable it in a later version. Uh, so that's it. That's uh, the beta of Chrome for Android. Thanks for watching, everybody.